Happy Thursday, Del Marma. Thanks for joining us on Coast Life. We are your hosts. I'm Paige Marley. I'm Leah Rizzo. And I feel like we, we did this right. We're two weeks away from Thanksgiving. That's right. I feel like we're giving thanks. We are. We are. <laughs> I'm the turkey and what's yellow? You're the, the corn like the, casserole. Yeah, something like corn <laughs> casserole. <laughs> that is the thing, isn't it? I think so. Okay. I'm not a big casserole girl, actually. No? I feel like my family, like, I never ate casseroles growing oh, up. I love cas. Anything can be made a casserole. I've had hamburger casserole, yeah. lasagna casserole. I'm sure I've had some other taco casserole. I had, casserole. like, I'd never, like I said, like, I never ate them growing up. And mm -hmm. then I feel like the only time of year I would see them was Thanksgiving. And it would always be the green bean casserole. Mm. And I always wanted to try it because it was, like, it's got a lot of things in it that mm -hmm. I like. The mushroom, the mm. onion, like, all of the flavors. The crispy onions. But I don't like green beans, and every no. <laughs> every time I try it, I'm like. Bleh. I think my sister makes cornbread casserole. I think that's Ooh, that what it is. Good. It's okay, really yeah. good. Okay, so I'll bring you some. Yay! And then you'll know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Anyways, happy two weeks till Thanksgiving. <laughs> what are you thankful for? Oh, so many things. Aww. I think oh, always my family. Um, I feel like a, a bunch of the the new friends that I've made this yeah. year in the first year of Coast Life. I'm thankful for Coast Life too. Yeah. We'll get more into thanks. I guess yeah. closer to Thanksgiving, but. I just wanted to... Just a little preview for yeah, you. Yeah, a little early thanks. Never hurt anybody. <laughs> but as we were uh, speaking of food, yeah. uh, turns out Americans are hungry, yes. but for drive through specifically. And um, I'm definitely, oh, I'm a big drive through girly. Yeah. Big drive through girly. Oh, and yeah. I think like my worst, <laughs> most shameful drive through moment was like, I was so mad that I was going through a drive through and they didn't have a trash can near the window the so worst. that I could throw out my old drive through trash <laughs> before acquiring a new coffee at the drive. I was like, it's come to this. It'll stay in my car. If you don't, if there's not a trash can right there. Yeah. Because I normally, so there's this McDonald's I go to, right? Every time I go into Maryland, which is most weekends, I go over the bay. Mm -hmm. There's McDonald's right there. I always go and I always forget there's no trash can. So then when I'm coming back, like a yep. day later or two days later, I still have the old McDonald's in my car. Yeah. And I'm always like, I'm going to throw it away at this McDonald's. That's what I'm saying. Personal so problem. That's what I, I went through the drive-thru. <sighs> Old cup was already in the cup holder. I got new cup, and I was like, no! Because, <laughs> like, another Dunkin' that I had gotten used to mm -hmm. had a, a trash can right there in the drive-thru. So. Still love drive-thrus. That was, that was like, <laughs> the opposite of peak. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> For me. But I'll still but go to them. America is so excited about drive throughs that Chick-fil-A actually has plans to build a two-story, four-lane drive through Nice. Which sounds ambitious, but honestly, if there was any fast food chain that could pull it off, It'd be Chick-fil-A. And like when they succeed at this, I, I'm going to keep saying it, like they should run the airport or something. Like they uh -huh. are so organized and they get you in and out of that line so fast. Imagine if Chick-fil-A ran the TSA. <laughs> and they, they left you with my pleasure. Like oh, right. everyone would be happier. <laughs> you would never, like you, there would never be problems. <laughs> do you ever go through the drive-thru and then sit in your car and eat? Oh, always. 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 I do it like every Saturday with my mom at our local Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yes, there you go. Because we don't want to get the babies and my nieces out, in and out of the car. Yeah, so we, right, it's a process. We sit with them in the car and eat. Cute. Yeah. I like that. Thanks. <laughs> On a similar note of food, this is actually a great way to get vengeance. And I love this because like it doesn't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost anybody any money. Um, but there was this woman, I think Jen is her name, mm -hmm. and she found out that her husband had been cheating on her. So bad husband, ooh, bad husband, but great vengeance because as it turns out, his mother, his mother had given her a secret pizza dough recipe while they were together, handwritten. Mm. She's held on to it for years. And rather than giving it back to him when they split, this queen posted the recipe online on social media for all of these people to get a hold of this recipe. And so like hundreds of followers <laughs> now have this recipe and um, he's a little salty. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> the only thing, because when you first told me about this, I'm like, yes. yeah, it, like we said, it doesn't hurt anybody. It's better than the bashing his windows in with yep, your, yep. although, just kidding. <laughs> I don't condone it. I don't, promise. Um, but the only thing that makes me sad is because the mom is, is passed. Yes. I'm like, dang it, she might be like, anything but my pizza dough recipe. Or she probably doesn't agree with her. Her son, Honestly, so. right. Maybe if she saw what her son had been doing, yeah. she'd be like, you know what? Go ahead and post that girl. He deserves <laughs> yeah. it. But yeah, so the, the mom has passed. This is like family passed down mm -hmm. recipe. That's that's a good that's a good revenge. Yeah, I love I love harmless pranks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are fine. Much. Yeah, cool. But uh, we <laughs> speaking of comments, we love we love to hear your feedback and get you involved on social media. That's why today we are asking you, what are some beauty standards for either gender, both men and women, that you just hate or like they just shouldn't be a thing mm -hmm. anymore and it's just like it's so superficial that you're like ah, it's, nobody can keep this up <laughs> i think i've said this before on the show but i hate how much pressure women put on guys to be six foot stop you sound ridiculous i'm sorry you do you sound crazy you're so mad he doesn't look like a calvin klein model right do you look like a 
OG Victoria's Secret model, relax. All of us are beautiful. It makes me so mad also, when that like pressure's put on men. You pass up a lot of good people just because yes. they don't meet your height requirement. Like, Sorry, you must be this tall to ride this ride. I don't think so. No, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, are you the most perfect human being that you can say he has to be six foot? And that's not even something that they can control, which makes it more sad for me. It's right. like, I don't know, if you like a guy that's fit and goes to the gym, sure, whatever. If you like him a little thicker, sure. Mm -hmm. But to say you only date six foot, he can't control that. Right, that's something you can't change. And I feel like sort of uh, any time, like there's something that somebody can't change in mm -hmm. five minutes, like you can't pick on somebody for that. No, no. <laughs> if they're mean, sure. If they're a right. little short, if he's 5'10". If it's a personality problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair game, but that's if it's a, a physical appearance problem that, yeah. like, you, you, it's not, first of all, not a problem. Second yeah. of all, not something that you can change. You know, if it's not something between your teeth that you yeah. can't fix. Yeah, the women one I could go on and on all day. Endless. 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 <laughs> because you can't win, you know? You can't win. And I feel like right now we're sort of at this, there's so much of, of this push for plastic surgery and, and just, uh, like, lip filler mm -hmm. and Botox here and there, and then little things, mm -hmm. but, like, they're calling it sort of preventative now, and that's where I think, like, that's one of the beauty trends that really, and, and beauty yeah. standards that rubs me the wrong way, because I feel like in, A, 10 years from now, all of those procedures mm -hmm. that, that young women have gotten done are going to be out. Yeah. But they're still going to be young women, very impressionable. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, now I need small lips yeah. and I need a, you know, X, Y, Z done mm -hmm. and changed about it. And it's just like, you're never. How many times has like butt size been a trend? <laughs> All the it's time. It's crazy. <laughs> All the time. And I feel like to, to constantly change the way you look just because something's trending, not because it's like something that you genuinely want exactly. to change about yourself. Exactly. Because like that I can understand if like there's something about your, your yourself that you don't like. Yeah and you've been traumatized by people making fun of for years and years. I understand wanting to change that, um, but I feel like if it's, you know, oh, I want lip filler because big lips are in. Yeah. Oh, I want, don't you know, it. my eyebrows lifted because that's what's in, I don't know. There's so many crazy things. <laughs> There's so many crazy yes. things, and like those are the things that in 10 years yeah. mm -hmm. won't um, be trendy anymore. My controversial opinion for the day is if you are on a dating app and in your bio, it's, and you're a girl, and it says, um, like only looking for six foot, out. I don't know if I'd be Pass. friends with you. <laughs> I don't think so either. Yeah. I don't know if you're a girl's girl. How about that? Mm, there you go. That's my hot take Thursday. That is. That's a good hot take. <laughs> so we you. want to hear your hot take in the comments. Head over to our Facebook page. Participate. Again, we love to hear from mm -hmm. you all the time. <laughs> and uh, have a little fun. Keep yes. it, it kind of light. <laughs> <laughs> Please, don't hurt our feelings. Don't hurt our feelings. <laughs> but it is fun to hear from you. But yes, it is a, it's a good way to get... Get it out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we've got a good show coming your way today on Coast Life. Our field correspondent, Maya Henry, is telling us what's coming up. Coming up today on Coast Life, we're celebrating the 40th annual Caroling on the Circle. Plus, we're spilling the hottest tea. And find the home of your dreams with the Parker Group's Happy Place of the Week. All that and more when Coast Life gets back. Coast Life is brought to you by BB Healthcare, Coastal Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, Preston Automotive Group, Shell Brothers, and the Parker Group. If this face looks a little familiar to you, it should. That is Brian Allen Stevenson. He is actually a Delaware native, but yes. so much more than that as well. You may also recognize the name from the movie Just Mercy. Mm -hmm. Michael B. Jordan was in that movie, Jamie Foxx, that came out in 2019. Stellar cast. Exactly. So something really cool, though, is like we mentioned, Brian Stevenson, and, and just a difference maker in our whole country, Yes. from Delaware, and his legacy is going to live on in Delaware for a long time. I think so. So to tell us a little bit more about that, we have Chantal with us today with the Brian Allen Stevenson School of Excellence. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you guys. Of course. Before we get into the school and what it is, could you just tell us a little bit about Brian Stevenson and who he is? Yeah, so um, I actually, so I'm also a Delaware native, mm -hmm. um, I'm from Dover, and I had not heard of Brian, mm -hmm. um, but when I was teaching, mm -hmm. um, one of my teacher coaches, uh, Alana Berry, she was like, hey, my cousin, Brian, mm -hmm. he wrote this wonderful book, I think you would love it. So I listened to the audiobook and I learned so much about the rights of people who maybe didn't know about poverty and how we can all do something about that. And so um, I've just been really inspired by Brian mm -hmm. and his work to so help more people more the in the world figure out how they can make a difference um, and then educate us about learning about our history and our past and how we can bring the positives forward to the future. 
Definitely, yeah. So I, I met Brian and during the movie premiere in Delaware. I think that was something really cool too. Is yeah. he really was in touch with his Delaware roots and had one of the movie premieres um, at the Midway Movie yeah. Theater. Oh, nice! It was just so incredible, and the fan base that was there too. You're really like, wow! It was like um, I'm not going to say celebrity because he kind of is like a celebrity, <laughs> yeah. you know. But you think Michael B. Jordan was there, right? Right. right. You know, so it's re it's really empowering. Um, so this new school is opening up in name of him. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Oh, it means a lot. Yeah. So I'm a career educator. Um, and when Alana asked me to help join the planning committee for the school, I was really excited because the place where we started was service. Mm -hmm. Brian is so proximate to the community. He's so much like, I want to come home mm -hmm. and, and show people we can do this here at home too, even though he does his work other places. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we want to do for our students. We want to let them know that yes, you have power in our community and you can make a positive change and a positive difference. Um, and you as an individual matter, right? Like you guys can make power like make positive changes a group but yeah. also you have power just by yourself and who you are yeah. and so that's the whole, that's the really the crux of what we're doing mm -hmm. at base which is what we call ourselves with our acronym right it's a long name <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so we're just really excited to be able to help empower our students mm -hmm. to be positive forces for change in the community and then go off and do awesome things yes. whatever those are yeah, I think it's also refreshing and instilling uh, to instill that sort of yes. you as an individual can make a change because I think it's intimidating. It can be scary, difficult to, yeah. to think, oh, yeah, I'm on my own can start change. And I think so many groups of change start with an individual. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a, a really refreshing message. So what are the, the age groups that can attend BASE? Yeah. So next year we're opening with grades six, seven, and eight. Mm -hmm. um, so we're starting with the middle school, but we will grow to 12th grade. So our oh, eighth yeah. graders will be our first graduating class. How mm -hmm. cool. Because we'll add a sixth grade class every year. So we're oh, really excited about starting with the foundation in middle school mm -hmm. and then watching them flourish and grow as yes. they, they go on to graduate. Incredible. How exciting. Yes, and applications, if your student wants to go to the school, if you want your child to go to the school, applications are open. Yeah. So can you just tell us about the application process, who can apply? and how they can apply. Yep, so if you are a Delaware resident and your child's enrolled in Delaware Public Schools, mm -hmm. um, you can apply to our school. Um, and it's tuition free, we're a public charter, uh, so we're still public school. Uh, and so what you would wanna do is you can go right to our website, B-A-S-S-E-I-N-C.org, mm -hmm. and all the information is there to make it easy for people. So. Nice. Great. Oh, that's incredible. What do you hope comes out of BASE? I know, of, of course, teaching kids, you know, this power, but, but why do you think it's so important that BASE is open for students in Delaware? Yeah, I think another thing that's really exciting is about all the partnerships we mm. get to do. So we're in this group of all these other schools that are doing this awesome work to mm -hmm. work together to figure out how to make school more relevant and engaging for kids. Yeah. And so for me, um, bringing that joy and curiosity um, back to students in the classroom and then watching what they do with it because our students are so smart, they have so many great ideas, um, and I, I'm excited to see those actually come into reality. Yeah, I've got a lot of parents and students are excited yeah. as well. Um, just real quick before we let you go, when do applications close? When do they have to apply by? You have until January 10th at okay. midnight. So. Okay. Get them in before January 10th. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's going to sneak up on you. Yes, yeah, it, will, it is. Especially, especially with the holidays. Jinx. <laughs> yep. You heard it by, <laughs> from them first. <laughs> Amazing. John Tullo, thank you so much for your part in educating yes. Delaware students, but um, also for being here today and, and, and educating us as well as everyone watching. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I'm really excited. We're excited for you. Yes, definitely. All right, we have a lot more to talk about you guys today, so stay right where you are. We'll be back in just a minute. We've told you the holiday season is fast approaching and there are so many holiday events coming up that are both fun and give back to the community, yes. which we love. So mm -hmm. joining us on the Coast Life Couch today to talk a little bit more about one that I'm sure you know about in Georgetown is Chip Guy. Welcome. They know about me? Or they know about you <laughs> and <laughs> Georgetown. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thanks yeah, for being thanks for here. coming in. So tell us a little bit about the Caroling in the Circle. This is a, a long standing event. Mm -hmm. It's both fun and again, helps out those in need right here in our community. Yes. Caroling on the Circle is a mainstay in Georgetown and in Sussex County. It's uh, This will be our 40th anniversary. Wow. Wow. It started back in the early to mid-1980s uh, with Sam Beard of mm -hmm. the Jefferson Awards uh, yes. fame. He began an initiative, I believe it was called Delaware First, and basically seeded the three counties with these events. 
and in Sussex County it was caroling on the circle, mm -hmm. intended to basically bring the community together and do it for a cause. So, you know, sort of celebrate the season, but at the same time, uh, do something meaningful for the community. Voila, 40 years later, here we are still, and in that time, the Caroling on the Circle program, which is a food drive yes. principally, has uh, collected more than 800,000 canned goods and non-perishable food items for local food banks wow. here in Sussex County. So it's done a tremendous amount of good, and we, we hope to keep that going in the years uh, moving forward. Yeah, well, uh, for, we've had a lot of newcomers to yes. the area who maybe haven't experienced caroling on the circle before. Could you explain a little bit about what people who attend can expect? Sure, it's a, it's a community singing event. Mm -hmm. We gather, now we have historically done this on the first Monday generally in December. We're mm -hmm. changing it up a little bit okay. this year. Maybe we'll get Good to that in just a Good minute. Good to know. <laughs> um, but um, it's, uh, it's a, a singing, community singing event. We, um, we have uh, traditional and Spanish carols that uh, we sing for about an hour or so that evening. Oh. Uh, we have uh, uh, Kevin Short and Ed Shockley, who are well known in the area, musicians and performers. They lead the event. And then we also have uh, a Marepa Band and the uh, St. Michael's Children's Choir. That's always a, a big hit. And so really it's just an evening of, of you know, a, a festive feeling. Yeah. Lots of, you know, Christmas and, and holiday music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people are, are, are generally it's a little chill in the air, so yeah. they're, they're huddled <laughs> up. And um, kids come out, uh, you know, uh, moms and dads, parents, grandparents. It's, it's just really a, a great reflection of community spirit, people coming together mm -hmm. yeah. and, and doing, uh, you know, this uh, for, you know, the the purpose of getting into the holiday spirit, but also that spirit of giving to, yeah. to do something that's uh, meaningful for the community. I think too that spirit of like the the good old days. That's that's yes. the feeling sure. that people miss, and yes. so to to bring everybody together. And and I think there's something about huddling together when yeah. it is chilly and, and singing that they're just there. There there's unity in that. Right. Um, so how do people who want to participate in the food drive element? Do they just show up with the with the canned good? Sure, they can do that that night. But um, we begin the food drive itself in early November. So the food drive is going on right now. Awesome. Okay. And we uh, we reach out to businesses schools, organizations in the community to try to drum up support yes. through uh, through that uh, those channels. But uh, the public can drop off canned goods anytime during the months of November and December. Mm -hmm. They simply drop them off at the admin building right on the circle. It's next to the courthouse in Georgetown. And um, we will do that through the end of December. And then once we have all those items in, uh, we then distribute these to about a um, dozen and a half to two dozen local uh, food banks. These are, these are the smaller community food mm -hmm. closets. Yeah. Um, there, there are larger organizations out sure. there that are doing a tremendous amount of good and we recognize that and, and this is really to just sort of dovetail with those efforts. Yeah. It's to help those smaller community pantries right. that, uh, that, you know, that may really only help a few dozen families, mm -hmm. but that's very critical in those in those world of difference to those Absolutely. few dozen families. Yeah. It is, yeah. definitely. So what we've come up with, we're partnering with the Chamber of Commerce in the town of Georgetown. We are putting caroling on on Thursday night this year, mm -hmm. December the 7th, uh -huh. beginning at 6 p.m. And we will be the lead-in act, if you will. Okay. So for about 45 minutes to, to 50 minutes or so, we'll be caroling on the circle. That will then segue into the town's tree lighting, mm -hmm. so they're on the circle, yep. and th with the volunteer of the year, uh, and then the parade for the Chamber of Commerce yes. kicks off at seven o'clock. So what you've got really now is a, a one-stop shop for all your holiday yes. festivities <laughs> on Thursday night, December seventh, in downtown Georgetown, and we, we hope that the public really finds you know this to be. Uh, a jam-packed full of, of, you know, glee and excitement yeah. and you know, <laughs> holiday spirit and all yeah. that. Um, just thought it would be a, a, a unique offering to, to really just do it all in, in a and two to two and a half hour span on one night. I love that. I think yeah. it's a great idea. It just feels very so nostalgic. There's, I've never gone caroling and you watch the movies yes. and you <laughs> want to go. So it's a really great way just to bring people together to do all the fun Christmas traditions. Yeah. I think we know our December 7th plans. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I, I was going to say, I expect to see you both yeah. out there December 7th. You'll want to listen to Leah sing. Not me though. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's got it. I'll, I'll background sing There we you. go. Okay. Harmony, right? Yeah. Will you be singing Chip? I will not. <gasps> I'll sing if you sing. Chip Guy we'll and Paige about Marley. It. We'll talk about Christmas it. Christmas duet. <laughs> okay, no I problem. Lots to look forward to on yes. December 7th. I also know um, a familiar face may be calling the parade. Jason Lee? He's yes, be there? Jason yes. Lee will be joining us. 
Uh, thanks to him, he will be the uh, MC for both caroling as well as the parade. Oh, fun. So he can sing to too, him. yeah. Great, let's good. bring him on. Just saying. This yeah, is going to be this fun. Is, this is going to be a good time. Good. <laughs> well, you got all your holiday plans worked out for you, yes. so uh, maybe take a minute, schedule that out. We're going to take a quick break, but Coast Life is going to be right back for some more fun. Okay, right now you probably see these. These mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes, the real versions too, though. Yes, <laughs> they're all they're all over the place. You, there's a lot of pumpkins probably on your front porch, maybe in your kitchen. You made a jack o' lantern. Yeah, maybe even they're starting to look a little sad. <laughs> sad. That's okay. <laughs> to introduce you today, we have Tori Seagraves, and she probably has a familiar face. Hey, Tori. Hi. <laughs> Hi guys, how's it going? Good. We're doing well, how are you? So Good. Tori's a reporter for Coast TV News. Mm -hmm. but we had to have her on Coast Life today because Tori did a really cool story about a great ways, really resourceful ways yeah. to recycle your pumpkins. But first, I know you want to learn more about Tori. You don't give us enough of, <laughs> of your personal life <laughs> <laughs> on the news. So Tori, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I've been with uh, Coast TV for longer than you might think. Mm -hmm. I started off as a photographer behind mm -hmm. the scenes and uh, kind of worked my way up to this spot. So I've been uh, doing this for a while too. I did this in high school, I did this in college, and here we are. That's right. Yeah. And you are a Delaware native. Yes, right? yes. I was born and raised here, uh, lived in Newark, went to Smyrna. We've worked our way down the state. So yeah. <laughs> here we are. Um, yeah, and this is what I love to do. Yeah. Well, we love having you. It's, this is a lot of fun. I think it's almost mixing worlds when we have the news team. It is fun. Up here on the couch with us. Um, Tori, so you did this really cool story. It caught a lot of our attention. How to recycle your pumpkins. Or not recycle, but, you know, put them to better use. Yeah. Is that a good way to put it? I dispose of. So. Dispose of in a nice <laughs> way. Uh, what were just some key points that you learned to help people out? Yeah, so I talked with the Delaware Department of Agriculture, and I also talked with a local goat farm owner, uh, Goat Joy, right here in Harbison. Yes, yeah. And they told us a lot about how these pumpkins are not just decor, and especially as you go to throw them out after the holiday season, mm -hmm. I mean, there's much more eco-friendly things you can do with them, like for their farms. A lot of farm animals like those goats, and even cows, pigs, they like to munch on the insides mm -hmm. of, of those pumpkins. So they don't want you to throw them right into the pen because if they do have that bleach on them from when you were uh, trying to preserve them for while they were decor, mm -hmm. or if you were painting them for fun, carving them, some farmers are a little more stingy than others about what kind of pumpkins they would like their animals to be eating. So leave them for them. It's a great way for them to get a nutritious snack and a little their own little pumpkin spice treat for the Cute. season, <laughs> and um, also be a little help, uh, be a little uh, more eco friendly for the planet. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. And it was funny before we got rolling. I told you, I'm like, you know, Tori, I saw a TikTok. This guy said, just take your pumpkins, throw them over the fence, and cows and horses will eat them. Mm -hmm. And Tori was like, mm, maybe not. Just throw mm. them over the fence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Try, this is Give why a she little does. knock, say hi. <laughs> right. That's why you do the research. So people shouldn't yes. just. There's a lot of farms in Sussex County, yes. Kent County. They shouldn't just throw them over. Right, yeah, okay. you, it's just like having your, your own pets if you're a pet lover. I mean, I don't want anyone to just give my pets a random treat that they have. Mm -hmm. They might have a dietary restriction or things like that. So you just want to take that extra step to say, uh, here is the pumpkin and leave it at the gate for them or go to the farmer themselves and ask them, what kind of pumpkins are you looking for? And I'll bring what I've got. Yeah, amazing. I love that. Yeah, I like when you said a little pumpkin spice treat. I know. It's cute because they are really nutritious yes. for people and animals alike. Definitely. Yes. And Tori, you do a lot of really interesting reporting as well. Stuff like this that you might not think as a news story off the top of your head, but then you're like, oh my gosh, this is important information I needed to know. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite stories you've worked on or anything that really just you remember really well? Yeah, so I've done a lot of stories, obviously, over the over a year now of reporting for mm -hmm. Coast TV, but a lot of the ones that I gear myself towards are ones that I can get a little more personable with, I can mm -hmm. be a little more human with. And I think there is no story to tell unless you get the face behind that story. So a lot of the stories that I like to do um, include, I did one where um, something as simple as some sidewalks needed repairing in Milford, and mm -hmm. there was a local woman who relies on her, mo her wheelchair to get around and be mobile, and uh, therefore she can't drive. So mm -hmm. she, uh, something like sidewalk repairs were a huge deal to her, yeah. and getting her story behind why she's in a wheelchair and why this is so important to her. It's really her way of life and something that turned into a new story of just needing some sidewalk repairs turned into 
really uh, life-changing altercation for her. Wow. Yeah. And um, some other stories, you know, just highlighting people's lives like that. I think it's really what it's all about. It's taking the local people, like um, I just did a story on a, a man in Milford who was a veteran and he served uh, as a helicopter pilot for a really long time, but he was just uh, inducted into the Avi Delaware Aviation Hall of Fame. So wow. just, uh, it's, it's as simple as looking at someone and saying, you know, everyone's got a story and you never know what it is, but mm -hmm. when you get to really spend the time and talk with them and make the connections and the pieces of the puzzle put together, you can really show everyone what kind of interesting people there are in Sussex County. Yeah, they're totally. the stories that connect us. That's Story! so sweet. <laughs> I know, I'm gonna get choked up over here. There's just a lot that you don't see that goes on behind the scenes of your job, you know? Yes. So, you, and you do an incredible job. Thank you, Thank I you. appreciate it. I love what mm -hmm. I do. Good. Yeah, well, we love having you. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to learn about the pumpkins. I have two on my porch right now that I've been needing to get rid of. So I'll probably stop by the goat farm. What was it called? Goat Joy. Yes, Goat Joy. I'll stop by Goat Joy after work. Yeah, there you Amazing. go. All right, Tori, we'll have you back again one day because you're too fun not to have back. <laughs> but we have you. more fun to get to as well today. So stay right where you are. We'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, everybody, it's Thursday, so things are getting a little hot. They're getting That's a little right. spicy in here because <laughs> we're spilling the tea all, always, every Thursday, courtesy of our friends at Spice and Tea Exchange in the Feet. That's right. Yep. So and uh, we got sort of a spicy story for you. I saved this one for you yeah. because I thought you would like this, and you know, you, you were gone last week, mm -hmm. so I was like, I'm going to hold on to a good one for Paige. I'm so excited. And no, so normally we kind of discuss these a little bit beforehand. Um, I have no idea what she's about to say. This yeah. week, so this is. I think be... this is a good one that a lot of people, unfortunately, might be able to relate to, though. Like, I'm, okay. I'm not sure. I think this is sort of like a hot debate specifically for our generation. Okay, I'm excited to hear it. I'm also excited to try this out. We have a new tea today. Yes. We purposely chose this one because it's a little warm for mm -hmm. November. You know, yep. so something a little refreshing that we think would be good cold or hot. Yeah. We prefer our tea a little hot, but this would be cold. It is Marrakesh mint green tea. And yes. it smells divine. Yes, uh, that's one of, one of my favorite things about mm. spice and tea is like every time you go and you open anything, like just the smell is phenomenal. It's amazing. Our whole studio smells like <laughs> delicious mint right now. Yes. In the best way possible. So I'll get to pouring. All right, I'll get right. to spilling. Sweet. This person writes, two years ago, my husband and I became pregnant. This was a huge for us as we both have always been really passionate about becoming parents. Okay. Before we could tell anybody though, um, sadly, their, their, the husband's brother and his wife had been trying to conceive and found out that they couldn't. Okay. Um, they were devastated, they were heartbroken. This couple was heartbroken for them. So it, just, like, it was devastating for the whole family. She says, my husband and I decided to hold off announcing. We waited three months, but then when she started to show, mm -hmm. had no choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, a week after they announced it, their brother and sister-in-law adopted a dog named Bella, and immediately she was all they talked about, and they refused to go anywhere without her. Okay. Like, they're bringing this dog all over the place. Uh, they say, we used to be close, but this has ruined our relationship with them. My husband and his brother don't hang out anymore because my brother-in-law is so obsessed with Bella that he's hard to talk to. We even stopped our weekly family dinners because Bella barks nonstop, pulls food off the table. She's a little nippy. They say she's a nightmare. She says, plus, my husband's allergic, so we can't even be around her for longer than an hour anyway. Ooh. They call her their first grandchild. Uh, they said the... There hasn't been a girl born in the family in five generations, which bothers her because they had their daughter. Ultimately, like their baby was a girl. Oh, um, okay. So you know, human baby, grand, so there, there first is a granddaughter, human daughter. <laughs> there is a, a human granddaughter, dog daughter, and there's the dog granddaughter in okay. the family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They say that they think my daughter and their dog should be treated equally and get upset when they're not. Uh, they say the people have been checking on mom and daughter and baby. They said they sulked to make this long Facebook post about how they were hurt, how no one had done the same thing for them when they adopted their dog. <laughs> like, they went on and on and on. And ultimately, they got a wedding invite for the, like, baby was invited. Mm -hmm. Bella was told to stay home. Well, yeah. Because it's a dog. It's Bella's a dog. And the dog is not of the bride and groom. You know, sometimes it's cute when, like, the dog is in the wedding for the bride sure, and groom. Sure, if it's, it's their the dog and, and he's the ring bearer. Sure. Yeah, you know, something like that. But, yeah, not, not as a guest. Ooh, this is a good one. So, yeah, they say, I know their dog is like their child, and I don't mean to be cruel or insensitive, but I am also tired of hearing them compare my daughter to a dog, and I don't want her to grow up to be around people who think she is equal to a poorly behaved animal. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, your, your animal is like your kid. Your yes. animal is not your kid. And I know so many people that kind of joke when like pets sure. are first. They're like, oh, my grand dog, my of grand course. cat. But like as soon as a human baby enters the realm, like it's a joke. 
Of course, not my, serious. <laughs> yes, my in-laws call our two dogs their grandbabies yeah. or their grand puppies, and it's funny, and right. I know that they're joking. And my father-in-law calls me all the time. Oh, how are my grandbabies doing? And I know he's talking about the dogs. Right. I'm also positive. He probably won't do that once I have real kids. <laughs> probably not. I mean, your sisters yeah. have kids, so like yes. they, they have real grandbabies that they, they call yep. their grandchildren. They also have dogs <laughs> yes. that don't come to weddings. Yeah. So the, look, I don't want to get too, um, I don't know, aggressive, assertive with this person. Yeah. Because I get it. It's it's a sad thing. Unfortunately, yes. a lot of people have known the struggle of having of, of not being able to have kids, and and their dog is their whole world, and that's fine, and that's right. fair. But you can't compare it to a real human. I just don't think you can expect the rest of society to react that That's way. Exactly like I can it. understand that the, you know the, your dog is your world yes. and they mean the most to you. And mm -hmm. and you know whether it's because you can't conceive or maybe you don't want kids, but mm -hmm. that dog fills that substitute. Sure. Right? You can't expect the rest of the world. To treat the dog the same way that they're going to treat the human grandbaby. I think that's the best point because that's always been in in most con controversies or problems. It's people saying, "Oh, well, this is my story, so you have to deal with it," and that's not how it is. You can't expect society to deal yeah. with your problems. It's not their job to cater to. It's you. not society's problem, right? It's, it's true, and I think it's. I, I picked this story because I thought it was a hot topic for like our generation. I feel mm -hmm. like there's a lot of millennials that bring their dog everywhere yeah. to every restaurant and every like their dog is a companion with sure. them all the time, which like, great if it's a well-behaved dog. And like a lot mm -hmm. of people don't train their dogs how to behave in public, because like yeah. it's a distracting environment for them. Like there's yes. a lot that goes on, and they're like, well, my dog's the best. And you're like, mm, mm. Mm. <laughs> I'd love to hear y'all's points on this again, because yes. you know, two people who have pets but no children, I'm just curious to hear what you all have to say. This is a tough one, I don't think I have an exact answer. No. I do have an answer to how much I like this tea. I was going to say, not a tough call. This is awesome. If you love mint, mm -hmm. this is because it's not peppermint, it's mint mint. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I think you're right, iced, it would be really, really refreshing yeah. on a hot day. But uh, it's also, it doubles as very cozy on a cool morning. I'm digging this. So I'll Me give too. you one quick reminder. Spice and Tea Exchange, Marrakesh Mint Green Tea. Go get yourself some. And we're going to be showing you also coming up in a little, not a little bit today, but in the next few weeks, some uh, other gifts that you can yes. get from Spice and Tea yes. Exchange. Because their seasonal tea. flavors are also amazing, so we'll get to those too. Right, we're going to get to a lot more Coast Life as well, though, so stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Spill the Tea was brought to you by the Spice and Tea Exchange of Rehoboth. You're watching Coast Life, and as you know, this weekend is Veterans Day weekend. And first of all, thank you to all the veterans out there for your service and your sacrifice for our freedoms to live the lives that we do and, and uh, do all the things that we do, enjoying those freedoms. But if you would like to celebrate those veterans and thank those veterans in your life this weekend, there is a great opportunity to do that in Ocean Pines. Kenneth Ingram joining me on the Coast Life couch today. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. So you guys have um, a ceremony coming up. This weekend, honoring veterans. This is good for veterans to attend, their families, and really just the general public, right? That's correct. Uh, we have a Veterans Day ceremony on November 11th at the Ocean Pines um, um, Veterans Memorial in uh, Ocean Pines, Maryland. Um, the ceremony will start at 11 a.m. and it will go over promptly at uh, 12 noon. We're just so honored to have uh, the public uh, know that uh, we're doing this uh, yeah. to honor and to serve uh, our, our veterans. Yes, the way that you know they, they honor and serve us <laughs> every day. Um, so people who do come to attend this ceremony, what can they expect? Um, uh, you, you guys have, I know last year there, there was a poem, there, there's beautiful wreaths, there, there's a lot that you guys do to honor those veterans. Well, first of all, we, uh, we find a keynote speaker. A keynote speaker uh, gives a... Uh, a very nice uh, address uh, to the uh, public. And basically, we do have um, different things in the ceremony. Uh, for example, you mentioned a poem mm -hmm. um, of The Military Wife um, by uh, Mary Adair. Uh, that's uh, very well done, very well received. Um, we also um, honor uh, female veterans mm -hmm. as well, which is very important. Yeah. So uh, it's just an overall general um, awareness uh, so that people can understand that freedom is not free. Yes, so. very much so. Yeah. Um, is this the sort of event that do, do people need to pay to attend or can they just show up? They do not need to pay to, <laughs> to, to attend. Uh, like I said, it is open um, and normally we have maybe 450 uh, wow. people there. So it's usually pretty 
pretty well attended. Yeah, that's a, that is a very well attended event. So maybe for people who maybe want to get involved and either help out maybe in, in planning this next year, how can people, can people do that? Can people get involved? People can get involved. Um, the Worcester County Veterans Memorial, um, we're a working board. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of fantastic volunteers that come out and help um, just getting the grounds prepared mm -hmm. uh, for the ceremony. So it, uh, we, we would welcome your your support. Awesome. Where can people get more information about this ceremony or maybe even about getting involved uh, as a volunteer? Well, um, you can get the information um, if you go online. Uh, I think it's oceanpinesveteransmemorial.org. Uh, uh, org. I'm not quite sure of that, but <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, Marie Gilmore, uh, if you go on Facebook, we do have a Facebook page and you can get the information from that. Yeah. Is there something else that you wish that maybe people knew or, or what people can do to, to thank veterans every day or, you know, in, in their daily lives? I find it uh, I enriching basically for myself personally yeah. um, that um, when people just come up to a, a veteran, if they wearing their hats or mm. whatever, just to thank them for their service. Yeah. Um, like I said, freedom is not free. Um, there's a lot of sacrifice, uh, but that in general, uh, just acknowledge basically that, you know, that uh, what we do and what we have done uh, is is an honor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think you're that, that that is something that I hear a lot. That even just just going up to somebody, uh, a veteran who is wearing their hat, a, a pin, thanking them for their service. Everybody likes to be told that they're you know th that they matter and that they're doing a good job. And I think right. we kind of forget that with our military because they're tough and upstanding <laughs> and and you're like. Oh. They know they're appreciated, <laughs> but uh, I think to, to hear it is, is special. And I think to honor them with a beautiful ceremony like the ones that you guys have coming up this weekend, right. is it is really special and it's important. Um, so once again, that time and date. Uh, the date is November 11th, which is Saturday uh, at 11 a.m. Ceremonies start and they're promptly over at 12 noon. Nice, in Ocean Pines. So make sure you check that out if you would like to honor our veterans this weekend. But stick around because we have some more Coast Life headed your way, so don't go anywhere. Okay, you guys, you probably remember last week, my co-anchor in the mornings, Matt Pensick and I, we made a little bet. I'm a Maryland fan, he's a Penn State fan. So, Maryland, Penn State, they played over the weekend and Penn State may have won. So that's okay though, because the bet was if Penn State won, I owed Matt Pensick a crab cake. He didn't specify which kind. I may be a little salty that Maryland lost. Also, I get to work at like 3.30 in the morning, so no crab cake places are open. So Leah, thankfully, she's a great artist. She's making a crab cake. A cake with a crab on it. <music> Okay, there's the cake. The icing, you know, it's spread a little bit. That's what we'll blame it on, yeah. <laughs> you did a great job. So Matt just got off the desk. He just did um, one of his newscasts. So let's go, hopefully he's at his work desk now. Yes. We're gonna go surprise him. All right, let's do it. Hey, so you won the bet, yes. fair and square. Here's your crab cake. <laughs> it, I can't complain because it's literally, it, 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 it's the literal definition, it's a crab on a cake. We did better crab cake. We, we didn't did. specify what type of cake that would be. So my son would ask every day, did you get your crab cake? Mm -hmm. Did you get your crab cake? I'm like, no. And it's like, but they're doing something tomorrow, but they're, they're not telling me what it is. And like, then the thought popped in my mind, uh, I wonder if they would put like a little crab on a cupcake or something like that. We thought we were so unique and creative. Well, enjoy your crab cake. You won fair and square. All right, thank you so much. Of course. All right, hey, we want to see a really cool house. It could be your future home. Happy place of the week is right now. Welcome to a six bedroom home in Milford built in 1990. This home spans 3,289 square feet with a finished basement and main level primary suite. It offers a granite countertop kitchen, ample entertainment space, including a seasonal room and pool. This week's Happy Place is sponsored by the Parker Group. Do you enjoy an espresso martini? I love myself an espresso martini. <laughs> do you enjoy the smell of them? You know I do. Okay. Do you want to smell like one? That one, I don't know. Okay. I do. I would, yeah. be, I would be fine with it. Okay. So I mean, I, there are worse things to smell like. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I have the opportunity because Kahlua 
and absolute vodka okay. pairing together to make an espresso martini perfume. They say it smells like, I'm gonna miss some of the ingredients, but they say it smells like um, espresso, duh, um, like cho dark chocolate mm. and night musk, Oh, whatever that is. So yeah. it sounds kind of cologne to me. It does, yeah. Right? It's probably I, got more of a masculine scent, yeah. but sometimes, sometimes those are really good. Yeah, I don't mind smelling like food. I kind of dig it. Yeah. So I, I think it's $105. That's kind of average for a perfume. Yeah, I was going to say, for, yeah. for a bigger bottle, that's right yeah. on. Yeah. I wouldn't buy it, but if someone gifted it to me, I would wear it. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Well, yeah, like I said, I feel like it would just make me want an espresso right. martini all day, and, yeah. like, there's lots of good places to get an espresso yes. martini here on Coastal Del Marva. Yes. So, um, yeah, I think I'd probably be hitting up those places. Where do you go? I would go to somewhere on Baltimore Avenue. I've seen that on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. It looks so good. Every time. Okay, espresso martinis for the <laughs> way. It maybe bartenders should wear that wear the perfume to work Ooh. and then they'll sell a bunch of espresso martinis. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know. I like, that's it's a great idea. Like, that's like a Pavlov yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. Right? I think so. Freud. Pavlov, Pavlov, one of them. The dog and the Yes. The, yeah. Pavlov. Boom. We took you dog, back to cat. <laughs> dog. Dog. If you took psychology, we're nailing this. <laughs> psychology in high school, you know what we're talking about. All right, cool. Well, enough of that. We'll let you go. <laughs> Maybe you're getting yourself an espresso martini, a little happy hour moment. Oh, we'll you lead you to it. it. Yeah, yes, you deserve it. And uh, then you can kick back and check out Coast TV News at 5.